In the previous video, we were introduced to speed markers, which further transformed our ability to control ourselves in each game mode. We'll now be forced to confuse ourselves even more as we take on a new force head on. Codename Minimum Force. I feel paralyzed. <laughs> We begin by input carrying so that we jump onto this platform and bounce off this jump orb. Continue on as normal, following the mini coin paths until you reach the first ship. Ensure that you're holding as you fly up into this ship section. You'll need to hold as you grind along the ceiling. At this point, when you begin to swoop upwards, swiftly release and allow yourself to fall for a bit so you don't crash into the spikes above. Release and begin holding briefly so that you land on this next slope. This next timing is quite precise, as after you shoot off this slope, you'll need to begin holding at just the right time to fly through the top of the yellow portal without making contact with the slope above, as this would throw you off your momentum. If executed correctly, you'll grind along with the blocks here and begin flying downwards. From here, just release and use one more input to get to the ball portal. There's nothing to mention in this ball section, other than the fact that you can go for the first secret coin path. Back is the icon, begin holding at this point. You'll change gravity and back again, barely making it to the first mid-air slope in this way. Slide off the first slope and prepare yourself to hold off the second one. Mere frames after you land, begin holding. By timing it just right, you'll jump off the left corner of this platform and the top right of this one, and thus save one input. This brings us to 29 inputs as we head into the very first duel section. For duels, most of the input saving techniques will remain the same since they consist of game modes that we are already familiar with. Just follow the coin paths as normal for both icons. Pay close attention to the positioning of the green and red coins as well, as you'll need to shift focus from one icon to another quite often. These first few timings are sight readable up until 37%. Here, you'll aim to tap as late as possible off the first pink orb and hold off the last pink orb at the latest possible point as well. By doing so, an unexpected phenomenon occurs. Essentially, you change gravity twice, maximizing your airtime, and thus this allows you to save inputs. This likely occurs because we interact with the portal's hitboxes at the earliest possible point, which causes us to also interact with them once more at their latest possible point. We can continue holding off these portals so that we jump once more. Continue on as normal, following the paths precisely. Overall, this section takes practice to master and can't be learned by explanation alone. When you transition into the dual ship, you don't have to input all that often, as you can heavily utilize the slopes at many points in this section. Hold as you reach the first slope and continue holding until the ship starts to fly up into the spikes. Releasing at the right time here gives you the distance that you'll need to begin your next input. Hold at this point so that your ascension path gets altered when you interact with the slopes. For some reason, the ships sort of stick onto the slope for a brief moment while holding. This allows you to maximize your distance before you fly up once more. Land on this platform here and you'll glide nicely into the next section with 38 inputs in tow. After using one input to jump over this pillar to the orb chain that awaits you, we now enter a world of pain. You can complete most of the chain as normal except for some key points towards the end. This is because it is actually possible to jump off the tips of these jagged slopes. That means you'll have to position your previous orb timings as precise as possible so that you can hold off some orbs to jump off these tips. Oh, and that's not all. Through this orb chain, you also need to position yourself in such a way so that once you jump off the last jagged slope, you actually skip the one time speed marker that awaits you in the UFO portal. After verifying that this speed change skip is indeed possible in the main level, we can now proceed with saving some inputs since we now stay at 2 times speed. Time your flaps as carefully as possible, as your last input just barely allows you to enter the dual ball portal unscathed. Once we reach the dual ball, proceed as normal, but use only one input for this ball below. By doing so, you'll pull off this iconic technique where your balls are oriented in the same gravity and you bounce off only this top set of orbs. Once you transition into the ship portal, allow yourself to fall and slide along the ground. Use two inputs to dodge the spikes as shown here 
ensuring that you're holding for the second one so that your gravity will change direction and increase your distance heading into the next portal. In this single ship section, make great use of the diamond shaped slopes so that you can maximize your distance with each input. As you approach the slanted corridors, you'll need to make sure that your input at 73% is very precise. Aim towards hitting the tip of the slope here so that you descend into this slope just before the icon portal. You'll need to begin your hold input here at a very specific time so that you can immediately jump once as you transition into the icon portal. By holding down here, you'll continue jumping as normal jump off the vertex of this slanted platform and should be able to interact with the top right corner of this jump orb. In practice, there would often be instances where I would overshoot this orb, so it's very important to avidly practice this technique so that you come into contact with it as much as possible. Hold off this orb until you reach the one block gap in the pillars here. Drop down off this next pillar and begin holding immediately as you're in the air before you land. By doing so, you can keep holding off this jump pad and jump off the tip of this midair slope. For this next sequence of orbs, space them out so that you fall towards this yellow orb on the top right side. By doing so, you can begin your input at just the right time to skip this next orb. Continue holding and hit these three orbs. Hold off the pink orb on the far right side so that you bounce off this yellow orb as early as possible. This allows you to enter the yellow portal while falling which is required to give you the distance you'll need to evade these top spikes. Tap these two orbs, but hold late off the blue orb up here. This will give you the distance you need to land on this jump pad and make it into the final, slow, painful dual ship section. Ensure that you keep holding as you fly in as well. You should end up with 84 inputs in this last section. Continue to hold until 91% in which you'll let go for a brief moment. Begin another short hold input in order to make it over these spikes and land safely. Next, you'll need to perform a really large swooping maneuver to evade this obstacle. Use another small input to make it through this gap and do another large swoop so that your main ship makes contact with the ceiling just past the saw blades. Keep holding as you transition into the final ship and release just as you begin to ascend. Follow the mini coins and head for the third secret coin section. You'll be able to rest for a moment. You'll then want to hold one last time to evade this deceiving bottom block so that you hit your head on the ceiling here, fly up but not too much, release into safety, and achieve victory. This brings our input total to an oh so fun 91 inputs. This brings our global input counter to 1138 inputs. I swear, we've applied brute force so far to keep this input requirement below 100. In summary, this level is actually turning out to be one of the most difficult ones in this entire challenge. After discussing with some people who have been helping me out with this project behind the scenes, they would even go so far as to say that we've entered extreme demon territory with some of these timings. I'd have to make even extreme demon verifiers aware, as this level will likely take a lot of attempts to verify thanks to very specific timings sprinkled at the points we've discussed. Trust me when I say that this is an absolute minimum force to be reckoned with. That being said, it prevents a really intriguing challenge that I believe is still worth trying out simply for the experience. That's all for me for now. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see all of you in the next video. Peace out.